Hello and welcome to Business Daily. Here we bring you up to speed with happenings in the world of business as well as analysis from the capital market. I am Yusuf Akogu. It's day two of the aviation worker strike ongoing in Lagos and uh, other parts of the country, but mostly well pronounced in Lagos. And our correspondent who has been monitoring the situation, Abdul Latif Ali, joins us via phone now to give us an update. Hello, Abdul Latif. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm you've been monitoring this situation. This is not new. Can you tell us what okay. is the situation right now? Okay, good morning. The situation right now is uh, the aviation union which started that today when we start yesterday. I've more or less with part the guy. And what I mean by that is that when I got to the venue of the protest yesterday around the general aviation coming of the Montala Mamela Airport, I only saw like uh, there is about six police patrols that have taken over the venue, protest venue, and I couldn't see any of the union members around. So when I later find out from them, what they did was to change strategies by taking a procession from the domestic airport down to the international airport. And as I'm talking to you, they are definitely at the access gate towards the international wing of the Mokala Mohammed Airport. And a particular procession is actually causing serious business for those connecting the international terminal from the domestic terminal. And uh, the, the good law actually started from the MMA2 terminal down to the Air Force, the SAM, up to the International Air Force terminal. That's exactly what they have done. This procession is ongoing at the moment, and security operations are also ongoing. They yeah, so that uh, there is no picture of law and order. And Ablatif, the workers kept talking about the issue of demand, demand, federal government not being able to meet their demand. Can you tell us what are these demands that they've been talking about for years? Yes, basically, the, 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 there are two demands. One of the demands has to do with the uh, condition of service of the workers. And when we are talking about this condition of service, they are talking about the consequential adjustment of military for some part of the agency like uh, the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, for instance. And also, they are also demanding the implementation of political of service, which they actually signed the federal government as far back as 2019. And uh, the second demand basically has to be the uh, asking the federal government to stop the plan demolition of the uh, artificial agencies offices in Lagos. We recall that uh, in 20... Some of the some of the staff are actually relocated to Abuja, just like in different universities. But we have a whole lot of Abuja's workers who are still in Lagos. And what the unions are saying is that they are not against relocating to Abuja. So at the moment, there are no alternative offices for them to stay in Abuja. And they are saying that even those who have relocated to Abuja at the moment, they don't have offices to use. So what they are insisting on, if you want to visit them to Abuja, all the conditions of charging, the various relocation allowances, accommodation allowances, and so on and so forth, must be paid. And that is exactly what they are saying. So, yesterday there was a statement from the Ministry of Transition appealing to this transition to the world to. Hello? Yeah, if you can yes. hear me, before the workers down tool on Monday, there was a meeting with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority earlier on Sunday, which in, ended in a statement. Is it that the, the authority are not really able to meet this demand, or what exactly is the issue? Yes, uh, the, what the union has said is that uh, they have actually given enough room for negotiation, for uh, round table discussion with the federal government and so on. But uh, the federal government has said to actually fulfill the demand. 
the SA had a meeting with them. The meeting was led by the Director General of the Civil Aviation, Captain Musa Liu. And uh, the Permanent Secretary of the Civil Aviation was also in attendance. But what the unions are saying is that uh, before they can actually agree to serve this guy, they must see some level of commitment from the federal government. I mean, they must see that the federal government is ready to pay the consequential adjustment of minimum wage. So that is the staff of the Nigeria Methodological Agency. So, after this, uh, after this meeting with the NCADG, the meeting was actually done uh, virtually via Zoom. It's only 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Now, they now call them into the meeting to have that. Now, the unions are saying that the other meeting that was supposed to take place in Abuja will have had the presence of the Minister of Labor, which is actually in charge of the Labor Affairs as far as the country is concerned. So they are now saying that they are ready to meet them in Abuja in Labor, since the staff of the Restaurant Ministry of the Labor, the NC, and other restaurants. All right, Abdul Latif Ali, I must thank you very much for that update. We'll keep tab on you to get more updates as the uh, uh, strike progresses. All right, thank you. Yeah, we take a short breather when we come back. The discussion continue. The show continue rather. Glad to have you back. It's still Business Daily on Trust TV. We will now turn our attention to what is happening in the capital market. What are the data saying? We start with the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Of course, the all share index at the close of business on Monday. The market, you know, closed in the negative again, 1.49%. That was what you get from the first trading day of this week. And the market capitalization also came down, uh, lost close to uh, $500 billion to uh, 27.46 trillion or the volume of uh, shares traded among all the quoted companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange came down to just this 226.5 million volume of shares, which was valued at just 1.57 billion uh, naira. But the deals, in a way, actually are climbed up to about 16 percent compared to what we had uh, the previous uh, day, which was uh, about 3,076. Uh, so moving on now to the gainers, the stock that actually gained after the uh, close of market yesterday. Uh, at the close of the market, indeed, uh, about uh, 140 uh, equities actually participated in the trading. Apart after of that, 15 gainers were actually recorded, while about 20 losers uh, were, re were recorded. Top on the uh, gainers, we have Ikeja Hotel, of course, which, you know, uh, closed uh, strong, 9.48. Uh, percent a uh, transcorp of course it, it's a conglomerate uh, into insurance i mean uh, a hospitality oil and gas and so on and so forth uh, uh, trading second uh, came second there with 9.47 percent and of course uh, consolidated hallmark insurance plc actually only uh, completing our top three gainers here 8.77 uh, percent uh, moving down to the losers the bottom losers of the day we have champion breweries is uh, into a uh, 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 colleague uh, uh, company uh, down zero uh, nine point zero six percent of course international energy insurance down zero point uh, I mean, 6.98%, and of course, MTN Nigeria, one of the blue ship company on the boss of the Nigeria Stock Exchange, also down 6.67%. Uh, 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 let's look at what, what, what are the market movers of the day, the top trades stock for the day. We have a Transcorp, of course, very much present, 63.44 million volume of shares, and of course, Fidelity Bank, uh, second day running, uh, 41.3. Uh, 1 million shares and uh, Sterling Bank, of course, Nigerian uh, PLC, also doing 22.78 million volume of shares. These were the uh, top trades uh, stock.
on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange at the close of market on Monday. Uh, moving on to the sector, the performance across sectors. You see that out of the four sectors we're actually watching today, uh, three of them did very, very well. With the uh, insurance sector, NGS Insurance, you have uh, an, an NGS Premium Board. The Premium Board comprises of a, a stock that which, with large uh, market capitalization, the like of Dangote, the like of MTN, and of course, are actually categorized in this category. Then the NGS banking, of course, uh, you know, all the banking sectors are actually li are listed in this category, uh, up there 0.08%. Of course, the industrial good is the only one in the negative based on what we're actually looking at today, 0.04%. So these are some of the uh, 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 performance across sector uh, on the floor of the Nigeria stock exchange. Let's talk to uh, a stockbroker, an economist and a stockbroker, Steve Mwachuku. He joins me live from Oimo State. Good morning, Mr. Mwachuku. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yo, nice to hear from you, sir. You have been following the capital market. Uh, can you tell us what you think about the performance of the boss yesterday? Of course. I think it's one of those requirements in the market that uh, at every given time, the market will have a particular sentiment that drives the market. Just like you read that, those who performed at the floor of Nigerian Stock Exchange yesterday, the likes of the Transcorp, uh, which has uh, an announcement of a strategic buy interest in Transcorp. And since that announcement came to the fore, uh, investors have renewed their interest in that stock because uh, it seems like uh, there is a strategic buy in in Transcorp at a as we speak, uh, Transcorp is also leading the market in the top gainers. So uh, the price continues to go up. People are looking for the stock. And those who are strategically buying into it either to get into the management board of the Transcorp. So overall, the market is relatively still stable. Yet the mood in the market is quite a bit uh, uh, calm in the sense that the, the declaration of dividend payments and declaration of uh, first quarter uh, financial or detailed financial results are also expected to be tripping. We had the likes of the UCAP bringing their first quarter, the likes of a couple of them have actually released. So uh, before the week runs that could have a good number of these very companies releasing their first quarter, which will also give the market the next breath, which definitely is going to be positive. You did uh, mention about Transcorp then, and of course, UCAP. But let's look at the third quarter result. This is almost April. One would have expected that the third quarter result, a result from many companies should have been in by now, but that is not to be. Do you really think that is one of the reasons why the market is still, uh, you know, not really doing so well in terms of performance? Uh, of course, uh, by the rules of the market, there are time to release, and most of the companies have voted for release their first quarter 30 days after the quarter has ended. Some are, uh, most of them, yes, 30 days they all voted for. So, uh, 30 days get the first. Uh, it has not ended because we are just in the 14th or 17th day of March. So, there's still room have a couple of days, a couple of weeks for those very companies to start releasing. So they still with the rules, uh, if I may say, because the first quarter and the 31st of March, and this is just about second week of April. So they're still within the time frame to release. But uh, a couple of days or a couple of weeks to come, uh, these companies will start making a very fast, as we speak, most of them in, in close period. When we say close period, uh, those who have trust or those who are friends and partners of the management teams are not meant to buy or sell or transact in those such stocks at this period until those very quarter accounts are made available. So it's still within the time frame to release such results. Like I said, next week and days to come, they will start making those results available. And investors will actually react based on the performance of the top and bottom lines of such results, whether good enough or whether stable or whether uh, bad. So investors definitely will re uh, react to that, which I expect to be. Like the one I talked about, the UCAP, it grew its top, the cross earning for about 27%, mm -hmm. even in the bottom line, which is the profit after tax, mm -hmm. was up also. So we expect such kind of results to be trickling in 
to the market in days to come. Hello, Mr. Anwachuko, before I let you go quickly, uh, the year to date, as at yesterday, was about 1.27%. 1 1 1 now it has come down to 0.21%, though still in the positive. But do you t uh, see this has been eroded at the end of the uh, business today? Oh, no. Uh, expectedly, uh, this, uh, at the end of every quarter, you find that when declarations of dividends have all the investors most often are just. And we have witnessed a rush in sell and a rush in buy in some of those very stocks, and which has, uh, yet the investors will definitely adjust and readjust their portfolios based on the performance of that stock. So a couple of them have adjusted in price payment. That's why you saw the two or three percent loss week uh, because when you declare dividends and when you are marked down, the same volume or the same percentage you paid will be marked down. So that was what actually resulted to the uh, that was what resulted to that was what resulted to the drop in the price of or in the OSHA index of Nigerian stock exchange yesterday. Uh, last week. So, uh, we have, the market is still relatively uh, stable, and we expect also that investors put in these very best opportunities they have by readjusting their portfolio. And we see the OSHA index, just like you said, is still in the positive uh, from somewhere around 1.27% 1 down to about 0. There about percent. So, we expect the market to be stable, the index closing the year in the positive. Steve Mwashiko, economist and stockbroker, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. So moving on now to our next discussion. Of course, critical issues concerning Nigeria and of course the rest of Africa uh, dominate discussion at this year IMF World Bank Spring Meeting, which is going on ongoing in Washington DC. It's almost at the conclusion stage. But Daily Trust Deputy Business Editor is covering that event live in Washington and he joins us via Zoom from Washington. Good morning, Mr. Sunday. Good morning, Mr. Sunday. If you can hear me, can you give us some of the highlights yeah. of the discussions at the IMF World Bank Spring Meeting? Thank you very much, Yusuf. I hope you can hear me. Um, it's been a week long, um, full of activities at the World Bank um, IMF Spring Meeting here in Washington, D.C. Uh, a number of issues have come up for discussions uh, relating to the world, uh, if you like, global economy and um, regional economies. and most importantly, featuring on those discussions with, has been the continuous uncertainty globally uh, arising from the Russian-Ukrainian um, war um, and the opening up of um, China, which is beginning to peak after nearly two, three years of uh, COVID impact. And uh, for Africa, uh, the conversations have remained largely around uh, debt spiraling beyond control um, and, and major economies in Africa uh, witnessing one kind of crisis or the other. We would know about um, the energy crisis in South Africa to the uh, serious um, economic crisis in Ghana. And um, of course, in Nigeria, we are also contending with debt, with nearly 96% of our incomes uh, going into debt servicing and all of that. So these were the major conversations. And of course, um, we had conversations around renewable energy and, and efforts to cope uh, CO2 uh, emissions globally to make the world a better place. Another issue that has also dominated discussion is the issue of tax. That has actually, you know, so much, uh, in, uh, I mean, uh, reaction from Nigeria here concerning that uh, suggestion from the IMF that Nigeria should increase tax. Some mm -hmm. are actually are calling for, instead of that, why not increase the tax net? How does this come to you? Well, um, the, the World Bank President, uh, David Malpass, made that suggestion uh, in one of those engagements we have with him about how we can free up more capital, for instance, in Nigeria, uh, to dedicate to other uh, pressing areas. And um, in his suggestions of what the incoming president or the president in waiting can do to expand revenue is to increase tax. For well, uh, you will recall that they have repeatedly said that um, tax to uh, GDP in Nigeria is really very low. Um, so for them, uh, opening up that tax bracket would be one way to bring in revenues. We, we confronted the Minister of Finance, Zainab, 
uh, I met with these conversations around how it is already overburdening for businesses who are contending with raising their own power, yeah, uh, who are contending with high energy costs and, and several other uh, dislocations within our systems to then bear the, the burden of, of more taxes. And uh, she said, well, uh, there are several ways they are looking at it, including uh, burdening the tax net because we are doing just about 3% of that right now uh, there's a need for to increase monitoring and compliance um, as the case may be and she also talked about the new uh, government evaluating what they think is possible within the finance acts that is available to them every year and to look at areas that they can get in more revenues but very importantly she talked about the need to raise the uh, value added tax from the current 7.5 percent to something in the region of 10 percent as as, as a low-hanging fruit and several other, you remember this government has also talked about a 10 naira carbonated, um, uh, a 10 naira uh, charge on carbonated drinks uh, as a way of reducing consumption or even making more money. So, um, from what she said, they are looking at quite a number of options, but that would be largely, um, that would largely rest with the incoming government and areas where they think they can make more income. Yeah, I'll, I'll some of the reaction, maybe I should just uh, read some of them out. Uh, uh, the former deputy governor of, Central Bank of, of, of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Kingsley Mongalo, did say that mock taxes will weaken the purchasing power of individuals and stifle consumption with attendant, attendant consequences for social cohesion. Do you think these people are actually talking based on the peculiarity of our environment? Well, uh, and that's the argument um, that a number of Nigerians have uh, done. The moment we had that conversation, I had personal calls to speak to about four or five uh, analysts back home. I, I spoke with Professor Ucho Waleke. I also spoke with uh, Chiza uh, of the big uh, investment group and, of course, another professor. And the arguments were that um, there is a little understanding of how the Nigerian economy functions, that you cannot continue to overburden people who have been stretched to the limit. There are, there are limits to how much these businesses can take and um, a further push would break them. Um, and, and there's a need for the government to be innovative about how these things are done. And so uh, the Nigerian analysts would favor, for instance, the need to broaden the tax. Now, there are quite a number of people of businesses operating below the radar that you could do more to bring into the radar rather than confront uh, those who are already, uh, um, um, you know, suffering from several legs of um, taxes to do even more. Uh, businesses are already complaining. The economy is suppressed. Growth is, is uh, not exactly in the regions we would like. We've been doing, I mean, we are projected to do just about 3%. Uh, but this economy should be doing anywhere around 7 to 10%. So mm -hmm. these guys are right. Uh, the IMF uh, feel, however, that uh, there are very strong economic decisions that we need to take if we need to get things right. Uh, the space the spending space for critical infrastructure, for health, for education is shrinking, and, um, and they are worried about it. But however, the Nigerian analysts will tell you that um, they are shrinking largely because of spendings around uh, fuel subsidy, and we think that if that goes, it will free up another six trillion uh, naira that can be reapplied to other sectors of the economy. And so uh, the debate continues to reach. Uh, uh, Mr. Sunday, in maybe, maybe in 60 seconds, uh, the issue of Naira, the design, was also brought to the fore. Can you share with us the thought of IMF and World Bank on this? Well, they, they also, they've always made their positions known about the timing and whether or not uh, it was right to have had political um, undertones to the implementation of what is a very critical uh, monetary exercise. Um, and um, how they think that um, the implementation may have stifled uh, businesses, especially because the economy is largely cash uh, dependent. And there is also a critical number of uh, economic players uh, in the rural settings that do not have, or rather whose business do not require this inflow into the banks and then outflow and all of that. They really, really uh, need to depend on cash and that they, they felt that the transmission was rather way too swift uh, but, but the monetary authorities here will continue to argue that um, they have achieved likely what they had wanted. They have mopped up over three trillion beyond what they had expected. They were hoping to do about sixty percent. They have done way beyond that. And um, uh, for them, uh, regardless of how a lot of things have panned out, they consider it um, as a program 
that has successfully achieved its objective. Deputy Business Editor, Daily Trust, Sunday Michael, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Yusuf, and it's a pleasure to talk to you again. Wish you See you back home. Well, that's the size of our show today. If you have missed it, join us on our social media handles for more. I am Yusuf Akogu. <laughs>